In this video, we'll look at web app diagnostics in Azure. There's certainly no shortage of diagnostics tools in Azure. So for example, diagnostics logs allow us to peer under the hood so that if a failure or a troublesome event occurs, we have data at our fingertips for troubleshooting. Now to set up diagnostics logs, I've got my app service blade open and in the resource menu here, I'm going to scroll down and under monitoring, I'll see diagnostics logs here. So I'll click on that and this allows me to set up my diagnostics logs. So app service web apps come equipped with diagnostic functionality that will log information at the web application and web server layer, which are logically separated into those two levels of diagnostics. So here at the top in application logging, you can set the application logging to save logs to the file system and to blob storage, and I've done both here. You can also set the level of detail. So for example, here I've got verbose. I could go all the way from error logging only to verbose, which captures the most information. So I'll just leave that at verbose. And application logging to the blob, same thing. Now when you set it to save application logging to a blob, you also have to set the storage settings. So here you see that I've got a diagnostics storage account. If I drill down here, I'll see that it's in a storage account called Web App Demo Diag. And if I drill down into that, I'll see the container called Diagnostics. So let's go back here. Okay, so now we can set a retention period here as well. So I've set a retention period of 30 days. And you can see here, by default, site diagnostics logs are never deleted. Using this option will delete the logs older than the specified number of days. Okay, and now web server logging. So I've chosen to save the web server logs to the file system. I've set a quota of 35 megabytes, which is the default, and again, a retention period of 30 days. Setting detailed error messages on provides more detailed error information for HTTP status codes indicating an error or status code 400 or greater. This information could provide info that can help track down the reason why the server returned the error code. And Failed request tracing provides detailed information about failed requests. This includes a trace of the IIS components used to process the request and the time each component required to complete the request. This data can be useful when you're trying to improve, for example, site performance or even isolate the cause of a specific HTTP error. And there's also settings down here where we can specify an FTP user in order to download the logs via FTP or FTPS. Okay, so now back over to the resource menu, we can actually view a log stream. And this is a live stream of the logging events that are occurring. So if I click here, it will attach to the application log stream service. And we can also attach to the web server log stream service. Okay, and you can see that we've got some logging coming in now. Okay, so now let's go to Process Explorer. Now, Process Explorer is pretty cool. It's not a diagnostics log at all. It's, but with Process Explorer, you can see the process is running on the server and you can get information about each process. You can even kill a process if something bad is happening. So here, let's take this process ID and we'll drill down into the processes here. Okay, and you'll see that we've got, here's our DAS runner and you'll see that shortly. So if I click on that process, I see some pretty detailed information about that process. And I can even click here to kill the process. Okay, so scrolling up under development tools, I'll find advanced tools. Now clicking here, opens a page that allows us to go to the advanced tools. And this is the Kudu dashboard. And this is also known as the SCM dashboard or Source Control Manager dashboard. And you can get all kinds of valuable information here. So under environment, you've got access to system info, app settings, connection settings, environment variables, and so on. Then. If I click Debug Console, I can choose between Command or PowerShell. If I choose PowerShell, then I get a PowerShell terminal. And it is a live PowerShell terminal for the web app server itself. And the thing is, we're navigating the file system here. So if I do a DIR, I'll see a listing of the directories here. 
And so, for example, if I go to log files, so CD log files, then it takes me into log files. And if I do a DIR here, I can see all the log files grouped in folders by the type of log files. Now, if I scroll up in the window itself, I can also get that information here and I can also download from here. Now we also have Process Explorer here in the Kudu dashboard and it provides you with the same type of information as you saw in the Azure portal. So for example here in DAS Runner, if I go into this process, so I look at properties here for example, I'll see a lot of detailed information about it. I can even download a memory dump and I can kill the process from here as well. There's also information about modules, handles, threads, and environment variables. Very, very powerful information indeed. Okay, over here on the Tools menu, we've got a Diagnostic Dump and a Live Log Stream as well as a Web Jobs Dashboard. So we can examine Web Jobs to see if anything's going on there. We can also attach to the Live Log Stream as we saw over in the Azure portal. And in Diagnostic Dump, basically this allows us to save a zip file of the logs and we can view those later. Now in Site Extensions, we can search through the gallery of extensions and find a number of different extensions to help us fine tune our diagnostics here. Now you'll see I've also already got an extension installed called Application Insights. If I go to Gallery here and if I type Diag in the search box and type search, then you'll see that I can apply any of these diagnostics extensions that I want from here. Okay, so one other thing about this URL. Now, here's the thing. In order to get to Kudu, all we'd need to do is actually insert .scm between the service name and the domain. Now, we can also get to a service called Diagnostics as a Service by typing slash DAAS here. Okay, now I'm already over there here in Site Diagnostics. So I'll just show you that. Now, it's interesting because this was once available under troubleshooting in the settings menu for a web app, but Microsoft has simplified the Azure portal and moved a lot of items around. And it's such an involving platform. In any case, it's a good idea to keep up to date on the portal. Now, here you see I've done a diagnostics analysis. And if I click here to expand that, I'll see that I have event viewer logs, memory dumps, HTTP logs, and there won't be anything in the PHP process report because we're not using PHP. So now if I click here, I'll see no log collected. And I see logs for HTTP, memory dump, and event log. Okay, so now let's move from the portal over to Visual Studio. Okay, so here I am on the configuration page. And how did I get here? This is my configuration page for my web app. Now if I go over here to Server Explorer, if I right click here and click view settings, that's what opens this window in Visual Studio. And you can see the configuration for our diagnostics here. You can also see the logs here. So you can actually download the logs from here. You can stream the logs. And you used to be able to configure logging in the management portal here, but that takes you over to the old ASM portal and doesn't really allow you to do anything at this point. Now from here, you can also right click the app and you could click on Start or Stop Viewing Logs. Now I've got the logs opened here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop viewing the logs. Okay, and I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to click it again and show you that we have the option to view streaming logs. So I'm going to do that. So now it's going to connect to the streaming log service. Now I've got a filter set here. And I'm going to delete that. Now let's go back to our app again, and we'll stop viewing logs and restart those logs. OK, so you can see now, welcome, you are connected to the log streaming service. So we can even view that log streaming service here in Visual Studio. You can also see the logs on the file system here. So what I've done is I've drilled down. You can see this log files folder. So what we're looking at is the file system on the server, actually. So if I click here to open the log files, I'll see that, again, they're grouped by type. So there's our application logs. So if I double click here, it'll bring up one of the application logs in Visual Studio. And I can see 
the events that we created in our source code here. And just to show you that one more time, I'll go back over here and I will open my home controller actually and show you. So basically what we've done is we've used a trace.write line and trace.trace information to create an information level log entry. And here we're writing a trace error log entry. And that's when we go to the about page and when we go to the contact page. Okay, so back over here to server explorer. Again, so these are our application log files. We've got detailed errors, HTTP, kudu, site extensions, transform, and so on. Now, we can also do remote debugging here in Visual Studio. And this is very, very cool. So what we can do here is we need to deploy the debug build to a suitable slot. We don't want to run remote debugging in production because you could cause your users to get a denial of service error. So what we're going to do is if we go over here again to, to Server Explorer, I'm going to collapse this. Actually, I'm going to open that back up and I'll see here slots and you'll see here that we've got a debug slot. So if I right click the debug slot and I select attach debugger, that will attach the debugger to that debug slot. So the web application is running on that debug slot. Now remember, you have to publish the debug build up to the debug slot in order to be able to make this actually happen. But once you do that, you're actually debugging the application live in the cloud. And that is so cool. But again, you don't want to do that in production. You want to do that in a debug slot, which is what I've done here. Now, sometimes this can take a while to connect. So I'm just going to let it run for a couple more moments here. And here we go. Okay, so it started up the debug build for our site here. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. And you can see my code here. Now, what I can do is I can come over here and I can set a breakpoint here. So I'll set a breakpoint right here. And again, this takes a while. What you really want to do is set a breakpoint before you actually attach the debugger. It works a lot better that way. It's a lot faster. Now we'll come back and it will set that breakpoint for us. And I'll demonstrate that shortly. And what's going to happen is in the application in Azure or on the, in the cloud, when I reach this point in my application, it's going to halt what's going on on the browser and it's going to bring me back here to Visual Studio so that I can diagnose what's going on. So for example, if I have an error. Okay, so now we see that that breakpoint is active. If I go back over here to the browser and here we are in the debug build. Okay, so if I go to contact first, well, you'll see, look at that. It dropped me into contact at my breakpoint. So at this point, I can go and I can diagnose the problem that occurred much more readily. So this is just such a cool utility to be able to use in Visual Studio.